I made a list of questions. I thought maybe um, you would want to think about them. And uh, so you can discover, remember I said on this journey from darkness to light, it's not a journey of just being in the light. In truth, you are in the light, but because you don't believe that, you suffer from unworthiness and everything else that goes with it. So this journey is from darkness to the light. So we have to look at our darkness, unworthiness. We have to look at that. We have to expose the darkness, expose unworthiness. Yeah. So do you feel good enough? What are the areas in your life where you don't feel good enough? Where you find yourself cowering or shrinking because they showed up? Or you find yourself feeling less than because she's in the room or he just graduated with a PhD. Do you feel good enough? And expose it. If you don't, that's good. Don't push it down. If you don't feel good enough, don't push that down. Say, you know what, God? I don't feel good enough. Say to the Spirit, here's my dilemma. I don't feel good enough in this area. I just don't feel good enough. And I want to feel the experience of oneness. So could you please help me see this differently? And the Holy Spirit will take that and she will shine light on it until you see yourself as what God created, until you see yourself as worthy. You've got to expose unworthiness. Do you feel worthy enough? That's a good one. Do you feel worthy enough? Worthiness is God, everything, love. There's not a little bit. You are either worthy or you're not. So you can't just have a little bit of worthiness or a little bit of unworthiness. You're just unworthy or you're worthy. So do you feel worthy enough? How about this one? Do you feel incomplete? Like there's something missing in you. Like you're inadequate. That's unworthiness. And expose it. You want everything in the light, everything. Anything that you push down will cause depression. Anything that you push down will make you feel sad, angry, undeserving. Don't push anything down, expose it, bring it all into the light and know that beside you, whatever your Teachers are Jesus, Buddha, Kuan Yin, uh, Katumi, whoever your teachers are that you see in form, Sai Baba, Krishna, it doesn't matter. Imagine that there are beings of grace, beings of love with you as you undo the ego's thought system of unworthiness. You need help and helpers. Are you managing your feelings through external things like food? You know, a lot of people say to me, oh my God, with the pandemic going on, I've put on so much weight. So let's blame the pandemic. But the pandemic is simply a mirror, isn't it? It's helping to expose what you have yet to forgive in your consciousness. We call it the pandemic. That's a name for unworthiness. Because if I feel worthy and I'm at one with God, whatever's going on in the world does not affect the amount of food I eat. See how sneaky it is? 
We blame external things for, for the condition we find ourselves in. Overeating, for example. It's because, no, overeating is a way to cover up some deep pain that you have not accessed, exposed, and turned over and given to the Holy Spirit. Everything that we do in excess or indulge is to hide pain. We have to admit, admit to yourself, I am wounded. I have wounds. And the universe will mirror those wounds. So anything that triggers you, anything you judge, is simply mirroring a deep wound in your psyche. And what you'll do to distract yourself from exposing the wound is drink alcohol, eat, watch porn, watch lots of TV. Whatever your addiction is, it is a cover for deep pain. Are you creating a mess in your life? Are you creating chaos? Just look around your house. What's in your house? How about your fridge? Your drawers? Are you creating chaos in your life? When you live with worthiness, everything has order. Everything is structured. God created the world in seven days. One, he did this. Two, he did that. Three, organized, orderly, no chaos, simplicity, serenity, and peace of mind. Are you creating chaos in your life? Are you always trying to get the world to make you feel like you're okay? Looking for compliments. How about that one? Fishing around for compliments so that you can feel okay. That's unworthiness. What do you do to get the world to make you feel okay? What do you do to get acknowledgement in the world? Instead of acknowledging that I am oneself united with my Creator, and no matter what anyone says to me or doesn't say to me, it doesn't diminish my worth. Because I am oneself united with my Creator. Wouldn't you like to feel that all the time? I would. Then you're not seeking for anything externally because you are that. And from that place, you are a beacon of light. And then someone else who's not feeling 100% because you're a candle, they come to you to light their flame from your light. How beautiful is that? Do you feel sorry for yourself? You know, sitting on the pity pot, as they say, self-pity, the victim, unworthiness. When I am worthy, I am capable. When I am hooked up to my God self, I am unstoppable. But when I'm not, I'm full of self-pity. Poor me. Poor me. And yet being hooked up to our God self offers you everything you need to move forward in your life. So if you are not moving forward in your life, it's because you feel unworthy. What areas of your life are you not moving forward? Meaning taking action. Maybe it's like you need to exercise moving forward, exercising, exercising my body. Not so that I can be some, you know, so the world can say, hey, look at me, but because I want my vehicle, my body vehicle to be so fit because it is a gorgeous gift to carry spirit around. I'm doing it for a higher purpose. Yeah. 
So maybe you have another area where you're, it's like procrastination. That's what that means. I'm not moving forward, I'm procrastinating. And yet the joy comes from doing the thing that you've been putting off. And remember, the ego doesn't want you to be happy. It doesn't want you to wake up and, and know that you are one self united with your creator. It will distract you until the day's end. It does not want you to find joy and be joy. Never. So what are you putting off? That's unworthiness. Trap. You are trapped and indulging in low frequency thinking. Do you lack purpose and drive? And a lot of people say, well, with the pandemic, I have no motivation, I have no inspiration, I have no this, I have no that. But that is like choosing not to move the energy. Remember, I am choosing what I want. I am choosing what I want. And if I get up and I have no purpose and drive and meh, 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 you know, then I'm choosing that because I can go to the decision-making part of my mind and choose again. And will it be hard? Yeah, you bet. Because growth though painful, it's painful to grow, guys. That's a beautiful slogan in, a, in this 12-step program. Growth though painful is worth seeking. Why is it worth seeking? Because you get to have a felt experience of oneness, of peace, joy, happiness, vitality, vibrance. And the ego doesn't want that. So it will never want you to clean up your act. No, you have to ask for help. That's why the 12 steps are so wonderful. I have to first admit that, that I of myself can do nothing. I am powerless over this, but the decision-making part of my mind can choose again. And I need to do that with my helpers with the Spirit. Help me do this. I am willing. I am willing. Because the only problem you have is thinking loveless thoughts. That's the only problem. When you start to think loveless thoughts, you fall into the trap of unworthiness and you start indulging and practicing low vibrational thinking, gossiping, judging, self-damnation, self-condemnation, pointing the finger, blaming, being a victim, you know? So you bet it's hard. It's hard to go from darkness to light. It's really easy to be a new age freak and talk about the light and oh my God, the bubbles and the fairies. and But then you have all this crap going on deep down. And if we wanna resurrect, we have to expose the darkness. You can't carry all of this to, to the light. You can't keep, it'll pull you down. You have to bring it up and expose it. You can't ask light to come into darkness. Light isn't even, it doesn't even know of your darkness. But when you lift that darkness to the light, it will certainly dispel it. It's like turning a light on in a room. The room is pitch black and it's like being in the king's chamber. It's pitch black and if I turn on my flashlight, well, the whole room lights up and everything is exposed. But what's in the dark is going to pull you down and make you sick. Psychologically sick, physically sick, expose it all. So if you don't have any purpose, if you feel like you don't have a purpose, find one. Serve somebody. Go out and try and make someone's life better. Maybe smile at them. Do something for someone. Seva, service, is the way to happiness. Not judgment. Service. But the only way you can be of, of serving, serving someone from a place of, of pure love is through oneness being one with your creator, and then serving your brothers and sisters. So that can fulfill a purpose, service, a purpose and drive, the willingness to take action on your life, 
on the part of your life that needs healing, the part of your mind. And we all have a part of our life that needs to be addressed. Yeah, maybe it's money. Maybe you're a maniac with money. Remember, God is orderly. Maybe you're a maniac with, you buy lots of food and it's in the back of your fridge. You don't even know what's in there and then you buy more. Guilty. Jamie cleaned the fridge the other day. I said, oh my God, I didn't know that was in there. That's an area of my life that needs to be addressed. I'm admitting that, right? So what areas do you have that needs to be addressed? where you could bring more order. And it feels good. Oh, it feels good. I open my fridge, I'm like, I know everything that's in there. That feels good. And now I have made a commitment to take an inventory every Tuesday, every Tuesday before grocery shopping, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of you ladies out there have fridges like that, right? It, it happens. Okay. Anyway, and here's the thing. My refrigerator is an outpicturing of a mental state. So don't blame the fridge. Where is that coming from? How you think shows up and manifests itself in the world. So I want to expose it all. I want to expose it all. Do you? Do you? Yeah, because I got Jesus here. I got Kuan Yin. I love Kuan Yin. Oh, money, put me home. We didn't sing that one today, but yes, we have helpers. All right, how about this one? Are you creating conflict and chaos? You know, deliberately stirring the pot, deliberately saying things about a person or about yourself, that's gonna create conflict. <laughs> Hi, Tori. Yay, thank you. <laughs> yes. Where are you creating conflict? And you would create conflict in your life because the mind is conflicted. It's split. You haven't pulled your leg out of fear and put it all the way in love. Both legs. You cannot serve two masters. So if you are in conflict in your mind, you are certainly going to be creating conflict in your relationships and in the world. And chaos it just stands to reason. As within, so without. Are you getting depressed? Are you getting depressed? Now they say that depression is the result of anger turned inward. Anger turn inward. <laughs> Hi, Doreen. Oh, good. Two Doreens. <laughs> Guilty. Okay. Sisters in crime. There we go. Yeah. Um, if you're getting depressed, you probably stopped creating. Where are you not creating? When we stop creating, we get really angry and we start hating everything. To be in a state of creativity is to be in oneness and to let that spirit flow through you. Just being in the moment and letting the spirit flow is creative. No agenda, no nothing, just being in the moment, allowing the spirit to flow through you and living a joyful, creative and vital life. You'll, you won't be depressed in that. So when you're depressed, you're angry because you're doing something against God's will. And God's will for you is perfect happiness. God's will for you is perfect joy. Yeah. And then, you know, creating that in your life, chaos and depression. Well, that's unworthiness. Okay, how about this one? Thinking um, destructive thoughts. Thinking destructive thoughts, harmful behavior, harmful behaviors, destructive, indulging in destructive thoughts. See how tricky the ego is? Last week we said, I'm on to you, ego. 
those the ego plants harmful thoughts in your mind and if you indulge in them it's because you don't feel worthy of love worthiness is huge unworthiness is well wow, that'll take you down that'll just destroy your life and you'll stay stuck and you won't blossom you won't express your your the potential you, you, can you feel that yeah I can go back in my own life when I was feeling low and I wasn't expressing I was depressing can you go back and find that yep okay and I love what Edgar Tolley says he says addiction begins with pain and ends with pain it begins with pain because you have made a decision to think without love and that's where the pain starts when you decide to think loveless thoughts and it ends with pain because you'll try to feed yourself something in the external world to get rid of the pain which just brings more pain you're on a hypnotic loop in a trance caught in the dream of unworthiness so that is addiction